welcome to the uh, house of the Lord on this glorious day where it's nice and warm Wisconsin weather. As we've gathered around God's Word today, we do so taking a look at the festival of Jesus' and baptism. And to begin this morning, we will sing our opening hymn, hymn number 685. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen.
then is found in Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. The life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please summarize the words and works of our Lord. Alleluia, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Alleluia. Our gospel then is found in Mark 1. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John of the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated then for our hymn of the day, hymn number 377.
Christ. Amen. The message for our meditation is found in Mark chapter 1. If you are the Son of God, in a few weeks' time, Jesus would be asked this question, really, by Satan, by the adversary himself. As he was led out into the wilderness to be tempted by him for 40 days without food on top of it as well. If you are, are you really Jesus, him? It wasn't just Satan, though, that was asking this question. It was something that really came to him quite often, I would imagine. Many people recognized him clearly as, as Jesus, the, the son of Joseph. Not many, though, recognized him as Jesus, the son of God most time. Many would have recognized him as Jesus of Nazareth. Not so much always Jesus of heaven. And being human, having humbled himself, taking those powers that are his by divine right by eternity, and at least laying them aside or concealing them for a, a time, Jesus would have been able to suffer anything that we undergo, although remain without sin. And thus he would have also been able to be kept. And so this was a real temptation that Satan would ask of him. It was a, a real temptation to doubt this, to doubt God, to doubt his Father, to doubt the Holy Spirit, to doubt the Son of God, yes, even he himself. Jesus, if you are that Son of God, Jesus can even take that next step towards the cross. This temptation of, of Satan may sound familiar to you, because it's one he, he likes to use quite often. It's one that he's used throughout the history of this world, going all the way back to when, when the Garden of Eden was there, and he came to Eve and talked to her. For he asked her a question there as well. He asked her, did God really say? And hidden within that, that question, there, there was something more to it. There was the idea, there was that question, are you sure you have a right relationship with God? Isn't he holding out on you, Eve, so that you could know evil on top of also knowing good? Satan has gotten good at that question over the years. And he's asked it in different ways to different people and at different times. I, I know he's asked it all of you, and many times I know. If you are, are you really a son of God, a daughter of God? We take a look at that question and we wonder. He's looking at our sins. There's a whole lot of evidence that seems to say contrary. But that's why God gives to us baptism. And in our lesson today, God will use baptism to embolden us, to strengthen you, and to fight off the attacks of the evil one. John the Baptist was now on the scene. He had grown up, he had become a man. He was setting to doing the, the task that God had put in front of him, to go to baptize. And there in that baptism, to also preach a, 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 a baptism of repentance, giving to the people a message that they might be turned from their sins, from death, over to God and the love that he has there. And how much better that was for all of them. And as the people came in droves, what happened? But with that word and with that baptism, the Holy Spirit had the ammunition necessary to do his thing. And bring hearts to God, which is exactly what he was doing. So with John being faithful in his ministry, and this now going on for some time, it's time for the Lord to take the seat. For him to become that main character, so to speak, and for the focus and attention to be upon on Jesus. So Jesus came to John, that he too might be baptized. This has always been an odd lesson. It seems so weird to us that, that Jesus would come and, and be baptized. In a lot of ways, it does not make a ton of sense. Because we have Jesus, who is God, and so he is without sin. Does he have to get his sins removed? Then we have Jesus being baptized into his own name. He's the Son of God. Why would he have to be baptized into that name already when it's his? Well, to be sure, it wasn't because Jesus needed his, his sins for him. In eternity, Jesus had been perfect. And in the rest of eternity afterwards, he would remain perfect. Yes, he would be tempted, and, and yes, the devil would be there. But he would overcome, just as he always had. 
He was able to do that. Jesus did not leave his sins removed. That's not what he got when he got baptized. Jesus did not also go to, to get baptized in order that he might take on divinity, that he might become God. There's been that thought down through the years that maybe that's what's going on here. But that's not what was going on here already. Jesus had always been God. And if we ever doubt that at this very moment, even though when his Godhead was concealed, that, that he, he was not God. We can turn to John's words from, from our lesson. John said, after me comes one more powerful than I. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down on a tie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It was not that Jesus would be more powerful than John, nor was it that Jesus would be in a position where, where John shouldn't stoop down and untie his sandals. No, Jesus already was his God. Jesus was already more powerful than John. Jesus was already in a position where, where, where John shouldn't have been able to go ahead and do this even most menial of tasks, this lowest of low jobs for him, because Jesus was the Lord. So if not that Jesus had to get baptized to remove his sins and not to become God, what, what exactly was going on here? Well, if you remember, something was different now. In eternity, Jesus had been God. That had not changed. But 30 years prior, something did. Jesus, that second person of the Trinity, the very Son of God, took upon himself nature that was not his own by eternity. That happened at his conception. There at his conception, he took on flesh, he became a human being, just as all of us are our human beings. And at that moment of conception as well, what did Jesus do? But he took those divine rights and those divine powers that were his by nature, and he concealed them. He laid them aside for a time, not making constant use or full use of them while he was here upon this earth. The Bible speaks about this in, in multiple ways with, with Jesus' powers and his rights. It does so with his omnipotence, the fact that Jesus is, is all powerful. We know that Jesus, human being, that, that nature that was now upon him, that had not been upon him from eternity, that humanity, it, it was endowed with it, had been given the, the power of God. So that, yes, a human being could do the things that Jesus was doing, because he is not only God, but he is a human as well. But with that omnipotence, with that ability to be all-powerful, having set that aside for at least the constant use of it for this time, what did Jesus do? But he ate food, and he rested, and he, he slept. And in this way, the Bible rightly talks about him being given additional nourishment and, and, and rest and strength. Even though he who is by God uh, all-powerful, these things were now his. A way that we probably can't understand, because how can we understand God and man coming together in the person of Jesus? We see this too with other things, with his ability to be present everywhere, his omnipresence. God is present everywhere, but Jesus, again, having laid aside constant use of his powers during this time and full use of them. Well, because of that, the Bible can rightly talk about him walking down the mountain or traveling from this place to that place over there. The Bible already talks about such things. Is it not then possible that something similar could be going on in Jesus' baptism? Jesus, by nature, has perfect unity within the Trinity, with his Father and with that Holy Spirit. Jesus has always had that perfect unity with that. But here in baptism, in a way that was only his by God as nature, can we not say that in his life he had set aside constant and full use of those powers too? So that when he did get baptized, what happened to him? But the Holy Spirit came to him with his power and with his grace as he alighted upon him in the form of a dove. He descended and remained upon Jesus 
And there he was able to give Jesus power and grace, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Father also came to him on that day, not in a visible form, but in an auditory form. We're not sure all who heard it, but no, at least John did and Jesus did. But there the Father ended up speaking to Jesus, You are my Son, whom I love with you. I am well pleased. Equipped then with that, the Holy Spirit went to work upon Jesus, and he showed to him his Father's pleasure. He showed to him and he strengthened him in those words, You are my Son. What was going to stop Jesus? What was going to prevent him from going about the task at hand that was winning mankind's salvation? There was the Father, Spirit, and Son all working in harmony together. And his baptism gave him part of that power. It gave to him the, this, uh, 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 this, uh, this power, the strength that, that was now his. God did this for his Son. And so again, what was going to stop him? This did not mean that the pains or the temptations of the world were going to be any less tough or any less real. They were for sure going to be there. But God was there for Jesus, for his son. And the spirit now who had come to Jesus and had remained upon him, led him out in the power of that spirit, out into the wilderness, where there he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. And there he remained without food as well. He was spurred on by that baptism. He was given the strength that was necessary to help him in this time. Just as that power of baptism was there with him on every single day, helping him in whatever task was in front of him, whatever thing that he needed to refrain from or do for the will of his Father, baptism was there of holding our Lord. It was there for him, that power of baptism, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying and his sweat was like drops of blood, thinking about what was going to take place to him on that very next day. Baptism is for tomorrow. It was there for our Lord and Savior too. As that weight of the cross was finally hoisted upon his back, and he lifted his eyes to Gethsemane, or to, to Golgotha, understanding what was about to take place, gave to him that power to take that very next step. Baptism is powerful. And it did this for our Lord and Savior. How much more is in baptism that going to be powerful for you? You who are not God by nature, and you who are a sinner. Baptism is not just a remembrance. Baptism is not just a symbol. Baptism is real power because it is connected to the very Word of God. Remember that thing that created this whole place? Yeah, that's the power that came upon you when you got baptized. So if baptism is powerful, in, in what sense? Well, for you, in a, a different way than Christ, of course, because we are sinners. And we rightly speak about baptism taking away your guilt, or taking away Satan's tyranny over you. These things are true. But we can also talk about baptism in a, in a positive sense, in how it empowers you, how it strengthens you as well. And we can use then Jesus' baptism to help us understand all of it. Because Jesus' baptism really is, is uh, the, the idea of, of what we have of your own. It's the illustration of what went on there. And Jesus' baptism was there, but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in a very visible or at least auditory way. And your baptism, who was there as well? Was it not that same triune God, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? At baptism, Jesus received the strength necessary to go out and live that perfect life for your sake. And now in your baptism, you have been wrapped with the righteousness that Christ won for you. You, now when looked upon by God Almighty, are seen as perfect and holy because Jesus is perfect and holy. And besides all that, you have received the strength to live in thanksgiving to Him all your days, to be a living sacrifice, getting to commit your very self to Him, thanking Him for all that He has done. In baptism, the Holy Spirit proved that He is more than happy to live amongst us as human beings and to make our hearts His home. He did that with Jesus 
fully man. If he does that with him, this is not open to all of us, and that is in fact where the Holy Spirit has been pleased to dwell too, with you, making your heart his home. And finally, is there at his baptism we hear the voice of the Father, you are my son, my love. With you I am well pleased. We know that was said of the Lord, of Jesus. But at yours, you are marked as a child of God too. You are my son, you are my daughter. And because God was pleased in his first son, his greatest son, why would he not be pleased in you? You who give to him pleasure as well. Because of this, as you do battle with the evil one, and he comes to you with that question, if you are, are you really? You know that God is there to defend you, and that he has given you everything you need to take him on, that he has given you that shield, that armor, to take on those evil arrows of the evil one. So when Satan comes to you, and he attacks you with remembrance of some sin, whether it's a new one or old, you point him there. You point that fire to the Father. But he comes to you and he, he gets you to want to doubt. He tempts you with that idea that you do not belong to God. You point him there and remember God's own words, which have always been faithful and true, unlike that liars. And when he tempts you to go and do something that is contrary to who you are because of what God has made you, you point to him there. And you show him how God's love is so much better than anything he might possibly concoct in any line of this. God has marked you as his child in baptism. He has equipped you with the strength necessary to do his will. Much like how he equipped his son. He was there for him. He strengthened him and he helped him in his baptism too. Amen. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We respond then by confessing our Christian faith together according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer of the church. In our prayers today, we pray for Justin Pilkington, who is going to undergo a, a difficult section of his training in the Marines. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit that is working through the means of grace. Plant your word in our hearts and cause it to produce the fruit in our lives. Strengthen and defend your church that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who spread the light of your truth throughout the world. Keep our children in the grace of their baptism enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. We thank you for the enthusiasm and unique perspectives that adolescents provide in our homes and communities. Help us to value young people, encourage them with patience, provide them with Christian mentors to help them make godly decisions, and strengthen their faith despite the challenges from the world around them. Give them increasing wisdom and trust in you as they prepare for independence, and fill them with zeal for sharing their Savior in words and actions. Raise us Christians to serve you in the ministry of the word and in all godly walks of life. So if God we come to you on behalf of Justin Pilkington, be with him during this difficult section of his trend in the Marines, 
allow him to trust in you in all things, including in this, and give to him that strength that he has received in his baptism to go out and, and allow others to see Jesus through him. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who may administer and judge our laws. Give them the wisdom that they may promote justice and hinder evil. Let your blessing rest on planting and hearts, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Be with all who devote themselves to any useful task. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Grant them your love and take them into your tender care. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in the silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Keep us in the true faith and bring us at last to the joys of heaven. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. We continue with our offer. We sing then our next hymn, hymn number 680.
Please rise for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may claim to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive then the blessing of your Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn in number 904.
morning once again. Good morning. Pleasure worshiping with you. Uh, a few announcements for us. Uh, no Monday worship tomorrow night. Uh, I'll be at a pastor's conference. Uh, Tuesday Bible class due to the council meeting being postponed this past week. Uh, there will be no Bible class this week uh, since the council meeting will be at 6.30 this Tuesday. Uh, later this month, January 28th, we'll look at the service narrator walking through what we do in, in worship. There will be no sermon on that particular day, but rather it will describe uh, the, the various aspects of why we do what we do. Finally, uh, once more, the, the mailboxes. You see that the system has been updated so that we don't have to pull those strips off every single year. Uh, you can find a, a list of who goes where and what mailbox belongs to which person on the bulletin board right next to it. That is it for our announcements. God's richest blessings to you in the rest of this week. <coughs>